Hey guys, and welcome into another The Haunting of Bly Manor reaction. Today we're going to be watching episodes 7 and 8, which I'm very excited about because we ended on a huge cliffhanger. We've actually technically ended on a huge cliffhanger since, what was the episode? Episode 3, The Two Faces Part 1, and we're finally on to episode 7, The Two Faces Part 2. At this point, I have figured out, I think... The two faces meaning we have Flora and Miles and then we have Miss Jessel and Peter and Miss Jessel and Peter have been taken by the Lady of the Lake. They're dead. They're ghosts in the house. They've been possessing Miles and Flora. To what extent, I don't yet know. Flora's been getting out of being tucked away and very confused and disoriented and upset. That is the real Flora for sure. But the cliffhanger that we just ended on was Danny seeing Rebecca and Peter with her own eyes. I don't know what she's thinking. She doesn't know that Peter's dead. She thinks that Miss Jessel's dead. They both are, but she's probably very confused and concerned. It left off with her trying to get the kids to safety, but the kids ended up getting possessed and they knocked her out and she's probably tied up at this point, if I'm being honest. But I'm really excited for this turning point in the show. The cat's out of the bag. The ghosts are out of the shadows. Everything's all out on the table. I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't know what to expect next, but I'm excited to keep going. God, editing the last two videos was rough for me because I was so embarrassed. I was so confused. Like, past Cassie, watching episode five and six, she was confused. She had some crazy theories happening, and sometimes I was just like, girl, just stop and watch the show, which some people tell me to do, but I do like to pause and give you my thoughts as we go instead of dumping them all at the end. I've found that it's a much more fun way for me personally to watch the show, and I find that more interesting to see like what you're thinking as you go before things get cleared up. So I hope that my, uh, my spiraling in the last video didn't annoy any of you guys. And I cut out a fair bit of it from the full reactions for the YouTube version because I really went on some tangents, let me tell you. Anyways, if you would like to watch the full episodes with me, my uncut reaction is available below on Patreon. But if you would rather just watch my edited version here on YouTube, then let's get into it. The Two Faces Part 2. Yeah, I'm already pausing. They're talking about the game again. Flora was talking about the game in the last episode, I think, where she was like, I don't like this game anymore, getting tucked in and out of those memories. That's how Peter and Rebecca are and manipulating them. They're just telling them it's a game. Them possessing them is just a game. Okay, so this is the real... Oh my god, this is going to be so confusing for Danny. She's not going to trust these kids anymore, but right now I, they're real because they're talking about how they don't like this game and they don't understand why Danny's hurt, how this is part of the game. They're confused. Oh, God. He tucked away just now. <laughs> and she's tied up. Of course. Come on. She's scared. Ew. Oh, here they come. She doesn't know yet. There's nothing to be scared of here. He just took her away. Somewhere nice, till she feels a little bit better. It's not quite the same. It's, it... Bex. Bex, you're stopping. Stay with me, Bex. Bex! <gasps> she just got tucked away, I think. I don't like it much when it happens unexpectedly. <laughs> the other times, it's perfectly splendid. Oh my goodness, the brainwash. Hannah? No. Ooh, Owen. <gasps> Jamie. Hannah. Jamie, I don't stop. hear any, any knocking, I mean. Oh. All this time, that's what you see. What, is this his mom? I'm still waiting for the big picture to be explained to me. Earlier, he was like telling to the kids, you have to think about the big picture. This might feel wrong, but it's right. What's the big picture? Are they scared of like a paranormal investigator stopping at Bly Manor? I feel like if honestly, if Danny went and tried to explain this to someone, she'd end up in a psych ward. But okay, I'm excited that we're following Peter here because I'm not, I don't think that him and Rebecca getting tucked away is the same thing as when Flora and Miles do. Trying to get started fresh. It's is difficult. She untrustworthy. And where do I go if not your father? You know, he'd kill you if he could. For oh. what you did to him. 
I just said I didn't want to have to turn to your father. After all he did. Or to the streets. Where do I go? To the street. To your boss. Mm. I suppose those juvenile records, he might not even know. Sealed, aren't they? Oh, she's threatening. I don't have any money. It appears that Mr. Quint was quite the burglar. Mm. And that, well, I suppose he's been embezzling. Did he say anything at all to you, Rebecca? He was the slightest hint. She's going to keep, keep her lips sealed. Well, he mentioned something about having some money. Forty million pounds? Oh. No. He How much? Had to pack a bag that we were oh. going to America together. She is oh, telling them what happened. I would have. I assumed that she had picked up on what that conversation was insinuating. <laughs> Maybe it just was really obvious to us because of all the context we have. But I'm surprised that she didn't realize that he had stolen from them in order to get them to America and have a life there together. Millions, though wild she looks so naive here and it's sad like she's like i don't know he said he got come came into some money and we were going to america could that have anything to do with this yes girl oh she was so wrapped around his finger get you back on your barrister track get you back to whatever goal it was you had before you even knew what a peter quint was solid what? advice you don't deserve it and i'm sorry to see it and if there is anything at all that i can do to help Please tell me. She always has the perfect words. She has a perfect balance of empathy and encouragement to keep moving forward. Yes. <gasps> she saw what? him before she died. He couldn't see me. Not right away. I had to figure out a way to make it so. Oh. Oh, you'll need to do better than Hold that. Hold on. Much. They have to figure out how to be seen. How did all these how did all these ghosts figure that out? And why did they figure that out? Just no one wants to see you, okay? Hold out your hand. Can Mom. he show her? Why? Man, please. Oh, is he just gonna show how it goes right please through her? Think. Yeah. Honestly, in a situation like that, I think I would accept it pretty quickly. You know, there's some I'm really happy with how they did that scene because a lot of the times in shows when it comes to like supernatural world meshing with our everyday world, when the people are seeing these incredible things happen that they never could have imagined would exist or be real, sometimes they catch on a little too quickly and I'm like, okay, you're just going to accept that. But honestly, if a ghost came up to me and was talking to me and was like, listen, and put their hand through me, you can't argue that. I'd be like, okay. Okay, got it. What if we still did it? You're, you're ready to... Okay, well, first Wait. of all, girl, he can't leave Bly Manor. He's stuck here. He's dead. It's That's how it works. But wow. Even if he could, you're going to <laughs> completely upend your life for a relationship with a ghost. <sighs> that's just... That's sad. That's... It, it just can't be done. And... You know, there's a part of me that's like, it would be so cool to figure out, to get a sense of immortality in being able to bring the dead back to life or bring the dead to the living in ghost form so that you don't have to miss them anymore. But this is where it becomes a problem. She's just stuck on him so badly that she has, is throwing away her life that she has. I can't get past the end of the drive. Wait. I walk and I run and the moment... The moment I reach the edge of the property, I'm right back here. What if she went willingly into the lake? Like, she willingly got taken by the Lady of the Lake so that she could be here with him forever. Oh, I could see her being at that point. With this type of talk, I could see her doing that. I'm right there and I can't even touch you. I can't smell you. You could, I think, if you're dead. You've got to be quiet, back. Whoa. Oh my god, that's how they figured out how to do it. I don't even know exactly how he just did it. He was very emotional and, and frantic and then touched her and it happened. But how do you channel that to do it purposefully? I don't know, I guess they figured it out. Ooh, okay. Tucked away again. That's what you say to me. 
she dead already? Oh, it didn't work. Oh, he possessed her and tried to leave with her that way. This has to be the night. Ew. Oh, it's just him. Okay. I'm just waiting for it to show me the night that she gets dragged into the lake. I need you to trust me because I have a plan. No. I plan that I'll let us be together again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has to die. I know. You just need to decide that it's forever. Permanent. What? How, how would I even... I, I don't know. I think it's just you and me becoming us. He's making that all sound very pretty, I, but in very vague terms. It's you. It's me. It's us. <sighs> Let me show you how beautiful you are. Okay, so now he got sent back to this memory instead of the traumatizing memory. Are they both aware right now that they're tucked I'm, away? I'm tucked away again, aren't I? Yes. She was safe. Tucked away in a memory of them. And he was here. Alone. Oh. Oh my god, so he... He knew from the start. Oh my god, I thought it was gonna be her deciding to do this. Because she was that in love with him. But he net he didn't even bring up that option to her. It's an odd discussion. It's an odd option to bring up like, hey, do you mind like killing yourself? But wow, wow, wow. That is awful. He said that she just had to will it. He made sure that she got tucked away. He was living in her physical body and then he killed her physical body. <sighs> she didn't even need the... The Lady of the Lake to come and get her. He brought her right to her. Is the- is the scary- oh my god. Oh my god, okay. Ew, yeah, there he is. So weird to see. Oh, that's a cool shot. Can Flora see both? Oh my god. What? Took a little convincing. I'm persuasive when I need to be. <laughs> Please, not this, not this memory. You you hid from me off, after the lake. You, you hid and, and I just keep coming back here. This isn't what you said. Mm -hmm. It's not what I agreed. I... Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. We could be together. Son of a bitch! You fucking lied! You're a fucking liar! I can't. Yeah, yeah. So he keeps getting tucked away to this same memory over and over and over in between being at Bly. They showed this happening to Rebecca once, and it was when the police were there, and she was telling them about what she could remember of Pete's the conversation she had with Peter before he bailed. And I wonder if that's, if it's just one memory for both of them that they keep on getting pulled away to. And if those are the ones. At first I thought, well, this, this isn't so bad. I mean, it could have been worse. I mean, I could be back there at home with dad. Mm. But then I started to realize why this was worse than that. I was a kid back then. I didn't understand what was happening to me. I'd, I didn't know what it meant, and you were there to tell me that it was okay. That what he was doing was okay. But here, this time, well, I know better, don't I? This time, seeing you in that fucking doorway. I thought about every kid that ever spent the night, and you didn't stop him. Oh my God. Mom. His mom is alive then, mom. somewhere. <laughs> oh my God, we're back here again. Oh my God, okay. Whew, that was a heavy one. His dad was touching him and probably all the little boys he had over and his mom did nothing about it. And then she comes knocking on his door as an adult asking for money. I wonder what she was in the hospital. Was she in a hospital or like a mental hospital? Stop it. Okay. Stop right there. Stop it, Flora. She no. has to stay ah. where ah. she is. We have to finish it now. Finish it. But it's too soon. No. We should give them a little longer. Them? Them? No. Give them a little... They aren't killing these kids. 
what would that what purpose would that serve them give them a little longer or are they gonna permanently are they gonna permanently possess them have they figured out how to do that and if they can like kill the kids souls and and take over them completely can they then leave this place is that what they've figured out give them a little longer oh my god and they're gonna have to kill danny because she can't see all this and get away scot-free okay Oh, they're psychotic. It's what we've been talking about. One last thing we've been asking you kids. The forever is. <sighs> Not the link back to Hill House. Not the little Hill House Easter egg. Not, I'm triggered by the forever house. Okay, okay. Okay, what's the forever house in this universe? Please do tell. That special present that'll let Miss Jessel and I be your friends. Your best friends. They're so selfish. But we have to finish it now. Okay? We have. Well, I just want to give major props to this. Both actors, but like the boy. Specifically, the little boy actor. Oh my god. He got it down so perfectly. The mannerisms and the way he speaks and his tone when he's being possessed by Peter versus when he's himself are so distinct and it's so insane to see maybe we can wait until wait until what what until we fade away she seems to have some guilt about what they're about to do oh my <laughs> that's what's gonna happen Bex. this is what happens to everyone who dies here up late so that is like what happens after a certain amount of time has passed as a ghost Oh my god, wait, that would make sense. I wonder how much time has to pass before you become faceless. I think it's a cool way to represent when your life stops, when your life ends, and you're stuck in this sort of place. Enough time has to pass eventually for you to forget your past life and become a shell of who you once were. And being faceless, nameless, storyless is so interesting. I want to know that time frame so bad. How long does it take for the ghosts here to turn into that? Do you promise this is a good idea? Flora, I... Don't go through with it, girl. You just have to think about you and me and then think us. <laughs> and you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing at all, because you're going to yeah. be tucked away. So obviously this is the speech that he gave Rebecca. And that kept her permanently tucked away until he killed her. But I think here, this is what he's telling them to keep them permanently tucked away. Just permanently. While they live their lives. In the forever house, just like we said. It's mom and dad. That's right. With your loving mom and dad. Mm. What about Miss Clayton? What happened to her? Nothing bad. Nothing bad. I promise you that. No more sadness. This isn't actually going to go. This isn't actually going to happen right now. That's me. No. You just... It's us. Now what? Oh. Okay, yeah. Hi, Peter. Ooh, the eyes. Got to put that one away for good. <laughs> His hatred for Hannah is kind of funny. Oh, there you are. Where is everyone? <laughs> Hannah, you beautiful, beautiful thing. Ew, he's so creepy. We're almost there. You'll see. He's not taking her to the well. You need to look down. Is she still down there? We need to get an excavator out here. They need to clear out all these dead bodies. Imagine if Danny... Would... Um, what if... You know when Danny met Hannah and Miles, that scene, by the well? What if she looked down in the well? Imagine if she saw dead Hannah down in the well and ghost Hannah right here being like, hey. Let me chop vegetables. Here, I'll be okay, putting of course we're back here. Myself. It'll be a great learning experience. Is she going to finally face it, though? Miles is gone. Flora might be, too. Mm -hmm. I think I can do about it because, because I'm dead. 
This might be an awkward side note timing wise, but I think it's kind of cute how the beginning of her memories, this cycle that she's been in of like reliving all these memories instead of facing the fact that she's dead always starts with her meeting Owen for the first time. I think that's kind of adorable. But okay, she we have things happening right now. I'm focused. She's not going to become faceless right away. And Owen's gone now. His purpose is done. That memories are- <gasps> The memories don't play along with her anymore. Because she's no longer in denial. How did I do? You did very well. <laughs> Wait, what? Untie her oh quickly. Oh my god, yes, Rebecca! Yes, Rebecca! Quickly. <laughs> A girl. I'm not leaving. No, no, no. <gasps> okay, 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 okay. It's fine. No, it's fine. The cutoff saved me from spiraling. It's fine. We didn't see her get dragged into the lake. We didn't see her drowning. We didn't see her dead. She is fine. Am I in denial now? Don't jump around on me. Please stay linear. I want to see what is about to happen. Thank God we're back at the same night. Okay, okay, okay. Girl, why do you do this? None of the other faceless ghosts are doing this. Why are you doing this? Why are we breaking away from this scene? Oh my God. I lived in the province of Hampshire. Oh my God. Miss Siegel is the lady of the lake? I didn't even think about the fact that we might get a backstory on her, but of course we would. She'd all of them have a story. Oh, I'm nosy. I kind of want to know all their stories after we finish the main plot. <laughs> I'm too stressed. The elder Viola, the younger Perdita. In memory Viola. of little girl <gasps> Viola! between them. Oh my god. Remember that one episode? <laughs> I probably look like a crazy person. Why did I just gasp like that? Remember that one episode where we were in like the church and Flora was doing the crayon little drawing over the, do you know what I'm saying? Over like she was stenciling kind of the crayon over a gravestone in the ground and the name was Viola something. That is her, and that is the Lady of the Lake. With their father in the ground, they faced a dire necessity for marriage. Ooh, it's weird. Two sisters were at this time it's in so interesting to see the house like this, because when you see a manor in a modern sense, it's like, it's cool. It's cool, but you forget that it was once this. This is what it was meant to be. And it's so weird to see it in, in its prime. Is it its prime? I guess it would be. Several devoted swains and some. Two or three who enjoyed the reputation of universal charm. But Viola knew them for what they were. Mm. Gluttons. Opportunists. Vultures. <laughs> and the look on her face. She's like, really? You think I'm falling for this? To Viola's invitation to a distant cousin. One Mr. Arthur Lloyd. Viola had made certain to be absent when he arrived. He had studied and travelled. He spoke French. He's her he cousin. Played the flute. And he read I get it. You know what? It's I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. But like back in the day, it was very important. You know, family ties were very important. And they tied that knot real tight. Every detail of Viola's entrance was a pageant. Mm. The sweat from her eyes. The wildness of her hair. They are schemers. She's a schemer. The wedding was a small affair. Fit in the business arrangement that it was. In the church. I, Viola. Take the Arthur to be my lawfully wedded husband. To love, cherish, till death us depart. And obey. To love, cherish, and obey. I think she left that out on purpose, sir. She would sleep. She would wake. She would walk. She's not sleepwalking, though. She's just restless. Perhaps it wasn't the room, after all. Fly belongs to you. And they will try to take it from you as they did me. But I will not let them. <sighs> Bly does get taken. Because as I said, her last name is not Wingrave. Is that why? Is she killing everyone that lives in this house that isn't related to her? You know, she just, that her ghost is that upset. And her ghost is faceless. So it's almost like subconscious to get rid of all of these excess people in her house. You know what I mean? It's not like she can actually remember her past life where she felt this way, I don't think. It is you. It is me. 
It is us. It is us. <laughs> oh no. Her suspicion began as small Blood. as inconsequential. She is getting sick. That was not a little throat tickle. No. There's the blood. What? So she's gonna die? Oh, this is uncomfortable. Hello? Okay. Oh, that is the most frightening shot of this whole series so far. Why are you hooded like that? Anyways, so she's gonna die and then her sister and her cousin are gonna get together. Uh-uh. Let us try again. She's dead. I oh. go and prepare a place for you. No. She refuses to die. She said, this is my house and I ain't leaving. She is as he made her. She says she will not go, she will not. Okay, I got scared for a second there with the plot that the, the sister was conspiring against Viola. I think we can trust her. I, 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 pretend I never didn't trust her. Oh, you're getting quite good at this. Yes, I think you are almost ready to learn to dance. We need only numbers. One, two, three, one, one two, two, three. three one. Turn. Oh, no, 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 no. Just one. <laughs> oh, God. This is where they start to fall in love. Let's show the young thing how no. it's done proper. I've seen the lingering glances. We can keep it there. No, don't dance. Ew. There's a dying woman in the other room. Oh, she's right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. <gasps> okay. I can dance with my own husband. <laughs> I don't need you to take that on. Mm-hmm. That or anything else. Mm-hmm. I would never. Really? Because I feel like that's where this is going. She still walks every night? Nah. I need to know why. Like, why? she's just always been like this, but why? No, she hasn't always. She has been since she got married. I think that's when they said it started. Or maybe since she started sleeping in her parents' bed. For the last five years, the only husbandly duty he's fulfilled is that of mourning. Oh my god. Think of Isabel. What will she be left with? What memories of you will she carry? I can say without vanity now that I am done with them. Okay. They will be a great inheritance for our daughter. Promise me that you will keep them for her. That you will keep the key. And you will never give it to anyone. Yeah. Except our child. Don't you Dare give them to her sister. Until the word came to live in her hand. She's not gonna kill. The word was mercy. Ha. <laughs> and the word was a lie. It wasn't mercy on her mind. It was a different word that had infected her all this time. The word had always been enough. I wonder when that switch flipped for her. Like, the narrator said she's been thinking it. When did that start? And that was the first death at Bly, right? So now she's going to be coming back a ghost? Concerning the widower, now the lord of Bly Manor in all respects, very soon came to be predicted that he would marry again. Mm -hmm. When Perdita's eyes, he felt an echo of violence. Mm -hmm. And the echo growing louder. Oh my they god. They were married, as was becoming with great privacy. And her adopted daughter refused every turn to see her as a mother yeah tale as old as time where's the ghost of viola though she had long since ascertained that her sister's immense wardrobe had been sequestered for the benefit of her daughter it was a revolting thought that these exquisite fabrics would no. await the commands of leave those clothes alone perdita had reached a limit I trusted you. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. And we would let it fall to ruin before she comes of age. Once and for all. It's a difficult conversation because I get like how much this manner meant to Viola. And maybe, maybe if things are as dire as they say they are and they could really lose this place, it's time to break out the silks. But I don't know. That's. I feel like that's not a choice you can make for the dead. You know, me, I'd have to like... Stick with the dead's literal final wishes. And we know that she's just, she's doing it because she wants to feel that silk on her skin. That's why she's doing it. But what right had Violet to dispose of our future? Oh my God. 
What a dark horse. She's she's manipulative. I feel like when she opens this chest, it's going to unleash Viola's ghost. Because I've been waiting. I thought that her ghost would be there right away, but it's been at least, what, they said six years, I think, since she died. Oh, this is what's going to do it for sure. I don't even want to look at her touch it. She's going against her dead sister's final wishes. Sisters all do, always do want to steal each other's clothes. It's just sisterhood, I suppose. Oh, that's a step past sisterhood in my book. That's a demon. You know what? She told you not to go snooping in there. She said they weren't yours. Oh my God. That is traumatizing. She has been here, but she hasn't figured out how to be seen yet. She's literally stuck in this room. She would sleep. Oh. She would wake. She would walk. She would walk. Yeah, in this one room. To the door, to the window, to the dresser, to the vanity. Back to sleep. Wake up. Door, window, dresser, vanity. Sleep, wake up. My god. And time went by. How much time? It was impossible to reason. Six years. One day, Isabel would open her mother's trunk and claim her reward. Uh-huh. An ocean of time. The moment finally came. But it wasn't her daughter. Oh my god, what would have happened if it was Isabel that opened the trunk one day? Would it not have set off this fury, this murderous demon rampage that she goes on? Would she have been able to move on? you know, and like passed to heaven or whatever is the version of that in this universe. Yeah. Honestly, I get it. She waited all that time in this endless purgatory for her sister to show up in the end. The business was empty. The manor was lost. They would move away from here, sell the manor and find a quieter life. She'd be with them. And that was all that mattered. No, they're leaving, girl. Oh my god, they're taking it. Oh. This final insult of being cast to the swampy depths <sighs> while her daughter would grow to womanhood. It shattered Viola's heart. Viola would not go. Yeah. She instead made her own gravity. Gravity of will. She would sleep. She said, I'm not gonna die until I say so. And then she said, mm, I'm a ghost and I'm not gonna leave. <laughs> she would wake. Oh my god, yes. She would wake. She would walk. And she would walk. How did she figure that out? I guess Peter's kind of right. You just have to will it to be that way. This woman is the definition of willpower. She willed all of this into existence. All up here, it seems. And has passed that skill on to all the other ghosts. To the room she once shared with her husband. Mm. Her infant daughter. Mm -hmm. And the remembering itself was injury in you. I need to see the first kill. I mean, the first kill was her sister, but there was motive behind killing her sister. Why take all these other lives? I guess my original theory could be because they don't. she feels that they don't belong in her home. And on the daughter she believed, each time she woke, would be waiting for her there. You mustn't be in this wing without protection. Oh my god. As the plague doctor died. Got it. So she's just she over was it. immediately forgotten. Her gravity, it seemed, her invented gravity that held her to the ground. Hold everyone else. It would hold others too. Whoa. She would sleep. And as happens when one dreams. So if we can figure out how to expel her, her ghost, all the other ghosts should be free too. That's what we have to do. Yeah, okay. She would walk. She wouldn't even remember everyone she's killed. Wow. I wonder why she didn't kill the Wingraves. They didn't die here, you know, at her hands. All things fade. Forgetting things who she is, flesh, what she's doing, stone, what her purpose is. Themselves. As her memories left her, so too her face. Mm. So little did she remember. She found a child in <gasps> her daughter's old bed. And here was a child. It oh must my be God. the child whom she'd sought. They were fading as well. Mm-hmm. The little, the little kid is so sad. 
I just randomly remembered that like this whole show has been narrated by the person from like the first scene of the first episode where she was like, oh, I have a ghost story. How long has she been sitting there telling this story to that poor room of people? Oh my god. But also, is she a demon? Is she a ghost? She's a ghost. Is she a demon? I don't know. Not really. She's just a woman forgotten in every sense of the word. So like, I can't consider it evil what she's done. It's weird. A fate that befell even those who died of other causes of life, who found themselves in the grips of Viola's gravity. Mm. Okay, oh, interesting. They don't have to be killed directly by her. And no hope it would seem for the younger pair. Now, hold on. When we saw Miles push Hannah down the well before, was that a flash forward of this scene where Miles is trying to show her, or Peter, you know, but Miles is showing her what she needs to face, that she needs to face her death? I don't think that push was literally miles there's a gray area to that in my eyes right now you're gonna cut it off again of course i was so happy at the beginning of the episode that we were starting off where we left off and they weren't gonna jump around and then they sucked me into this story which obviously i'm happy about like i of course we're gonna find out the whole backstory of the lady of the lake of course but of course now they've left They've left me with the finale. I'm gonna hold that off. Oh, I was thinking about doing all three in one day, but I'm getting, it's getting late. I need my brain to be completely alive for this finale. So I will have patience. I will. I feel like I have nothing to say because the show just said it all. I wonder, no, there's no way. Her um, husband and daughter must be, are they both dead at this point? Maybe the daughter's still alive, but the daughter would be really old, no? I can't remember if they gave us a specific year, but it looked like 1800s and now we're current day. So yeah, her daughter even would would be gone at this point too. I don't know, it, it sucks that they left her behind. It sucks that he married her sister. I saw it coming and I still was a little sad by it. Her sister, her greediness is what set off this whole chain of events. Honestly, really, if you look at it, the, the antagonist <laughs> of this entire series is Perdita. Perdita? 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 I forget. If it wasn't for her greed, none of this would have happened. If she would have just left the clothes for the daughter, none of this would have happened. Now, given what did happen, I'm trying to think, like, what would have happened if Isabel, the daughter, opened up that chest? I think maybe they would have seen each other and gone off to heaven together. There was something in that, those final wishes that kept her around to see them come true, willed her to see those final wishes come true, and when they didn't, she willed to stay until she could find her daughter again, and her daughter never came back. And eventually, you know, she faded. I love this concept of the fading faces and the fading memories. And I also find it really interesting that the last thing that seems to fade is emotion. Emotion is so strong. And whether you can understand why you're feeling it or not, it's there. And it's still there in every time she kills somebody. And her s taking the little kid and not really understanding why, but just like, oh, I think, I think I've been looking for a kid. Oh my God. And he was superstitious. So he put that chest in the lake. I mean, I'm guessing he's lived a peaceful life since. I'm guessing they were able to move on, but nobody at Bly can. I don't know. I kind of, I'm trying to think if I have any predictions of where this finale is going to go. I don't think that Danny is going to die. You know what? We got a happy ending with Hill House, so I'm hoping we'll get that here with Bly Manor. I think they're going to, this is my hope for the finale. Danny is not going to die. They're going to figure out how to help the Lady of the Lake Miss Viola, move on. And when she moves on into the afterlife, the true afterlife, um, and her soul is free of this place and she returns to herself again, hopefully she'll get all her memories back. I don't know. Maybe she'll return to herself again in the, li the literal sense as far as up here. She'll move on. All of the other ghosts that she has created will be free as well. And by freeing Peter... He will be expelled from Miles' body. Miles and Flora will be okay. Danny somehow has to get out of this situation. She'll be okay. I hope she doesn't die. Hannah, I 
think we're going to lose her. I mean, we have already lost her. She's going to be free to go too, and it's going to be sad to see. And there's Owen and Jamie, and I think they'll be okay too. I, yeah, that's my predictions of how it's going to end. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Those are my hopeful predictions. Um, I'll probably film this next one in a day or two. Hi guys, don't hate me, but I fucked up. <laughs> I'm working on upgrading my sound situation, and to say it didn't go well for my first go is an understatement. The first thing I filmed after changing things around was my reaction to the finale of Bly Manor. And when the footage came out, there was zero sound. Zero sound. I know now what I did. We live and we learn. But of course, it had to be the finale of The Haunting of Bly Manor, where my footage is a silent movie. This left me with a couple options. I could scrap it, which I don't want to. I want to give this reaction series some closure. I loved it so much. The finale was so great. I don't want to just abandon it. It's a much shorter segment that I'm adding on here, but I decided to take that reaction footage and edit it similarly to how I would with the show on screen, and I'm going to do a little voiceover through my reaction here. So uh, again, I'm really sorry, really sorry that this happened. I am no professional and I prove that to you guys every day. This is, this is what's happening now. So here we go. Let's get into episode nine of Bly Manor, The Beast in the Jungle. My name is Hannah Gross. The year is 1987. I'm slipping away, Owen. I want to stay here with you. But you can't. So basically here, I'm just freaking out about like Hannah being in my presence and fawning over the fact that she was so in love with Owen and he never knew. Like, I feel like it's so big of Hannah. It's so sad that they had to stab us in the heart even further and show that Hannah has been in love with Owen. Now she's dead and Owen's never gonna know. Like, they have always had this thing between them, but little ghost Hannah is finally coming to the terms that she's dead and she never got to tell Owen how she felt. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. I thought ghosts were allowed to touch each other. And the way she walks here? Disgusting. Disgusting. It's because there's like not crazy music. Oh my god, Flora. Please. No, Flora's too good for us. Flora's too good for us. No, but can I pause and just go back into the fact that when hannah tried to stop the lady of the lake she the lady of the lake just went right through her like i thought that peter's whole thing with him wanting both him and rebecca dead was so that they could like touch and taste and be with each other again like normal but clearly ghosts can't do that unless it's just a lady of the lake thing where she's too powerful i'm not sure oh my god and then i remembered this i talked about it at the beginning of the episode that uh henry uncle henry hold on before we get to what is about to happen, I talked at the beginning of the episode about how Uncle Henry was at his office and the last time we heard from him was he was going to go back to Bly. So I did remember that he would probably be showing up on this night in a convenient time. And he did show up at a convenient time, but as we can see with what happens next, it didn't go so well for him. Yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked. And then he's laying there, and then we see his ghost staring at his dead body. I was just not expecting them to kill him off, which obviously we find out that they didn't, but it looks like they did, and I didn't think that he would be able to come back to us. And I was so disappointed. I was so mad because I was like, we learned so much about his character and this internalized guilt that he has and this progress that he's starting to make, and then he's just going to show up here and die? I was I was upset. The lake. They, they need you at the lake. Go ahead, love. Oh my god, mom. Rebecca MVP. Rebecca MVP. She literally possessed Flora so that she could feel the pain of her death. Soon Flora would find herself dream hopping endlessly at Bly. Something she did not entirely understand, but something she felt in her bones. She had to try. It's us! It's you, it's me, it's us. Tell me. Tell me how Danny knew to say that. I still don't know. This was like, I paused here because I was like fathoming what was happening. I was like, she's going to let the lady of the lake literally possess her right now. And I don't know how she knew to say that phrase. 
give me your theories, but good on her for doing that, I guess. But yeah, at this point, I wasn't 100% sure if it would work. Obviously, the Lady of the Lake was acknowledging her. But then, this is what happens next. The blue and uh, brown eyes. The blue and brown eyes. Yep, look at me. I'm so confused. I'm like, oh my god, it happened. Because now I'm remembering that literally that's what happened to Miles when Peter possessed him permanently. Is the two different colored eyes thing. So I was like, oh shoot, it worked. Now there's no more... Well, I thought there was going to be no more Danny. I thought that the Lady of the Lake was going to just be in Danny now. I was was spiraling. I was stressing. Okay, yep. You see my eyes go wide? I am scared. When he checks the (gasps) room... Please tell her. So this was confirmation. Tell him I love him. Oh my god. Oh yeah, Henry's alive. My god, jump scare. This was confirmation that no one knew that Hannah was dead, which I had been guessing, but you know. The au pair invited Viola into herself. And the invitation had been accepted. And all of the spirits trapped in her gravity were released. Uncle Henry! Good to hear. That was a theory that I also had at the end of the last episode, was I did think that we were going to be able to, I guess, some, somehow banish the Lady of the Lake. By doing that, all of the ghosts would be set free. Your father taught me how to do this. I loved this scene, you guys. For it. No, I loved this scene so much. Because... It was just nice to see Henry interact with them again, but it was also nice to see him talk about their parents because they have no one else that they can turn to for that. At least not in the same way that they can talk to Henry because he has so many more stories than anyone else does. After the housekeeper's body was taken from the well, some in the village oh said that the cook God. rode and all Owen. the way to the coroner. He stayed at her side until she was buried, and he loved her the whole way. He loved her, you guys. You're about done up here. Oh, then we see how Danny's doing, and I'm scared because she looks like she's going through it. Obviously, we know that the Lady of the Lake is probably inside her. Backtracking on the whole Owen thing, I love that Hannah was lighting candles for the dead the whole time. Never for herself. Maybe for herself subconsciously, because sometimes she had an extra candle lit that I wasn't sure who it was for. But it was really nice to see someone light a candle for her. Anyways, I'm scared here because I'm like, okay, what is the dynamic going to be with the Lady of the Lake? She's waiting. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonderful. At some point she's gonna take me yeah that makes sense i mean i thought she was gonna be completely possessed right away but it would make sense that over time the lady of the lake would then take over her body completely but of course you know jamie has the perfect thing to say you want company or you wait for your beast in the jungle no because jamie is perfect do you want company while you wait for your beast in the jamie is perfect And I will be taking no oppositions to that. Okay, I was nervous. At this point in the episode, we're like 30 minutes in. And everyone's leaving Bly. And I was like, is something bad going to happen? Are we not going to be able to leave? Where's the twist? But then we leave. And we're at the diner. And and time has passed. And I was like, where the hell is this episode going? You should plan, you know, Christmas. It's a ways away. One day at a time. As long as those days with you pop in one day at a time is what we've got jamie being perfect yet again so obviously i like this direction that the the show took for the finale where the first half was finishing up that night at bly that pinnacle night where everything kind of finally settled and then building up the tension of what is still lingering over the next decade almost i don't know how many years passed but a lot of years passed that we got to see in this finale and i just can't imagine uh, jamie again is perfect imagine being with someone who thinks they're not going to make it a couple more months till christmas and you're like i don't care i want to be with you even though jamie knows the heartbreak she's going to have to face because she knows it can't last because of the situation but she's still going to be there so that danny can have the best time that she can have with her last days yeah had passed a trip around the sun. Okay, yeah, a year's crazy. I didn't think it was going to go that long. She was still her. We've got a problem, Poppins. I'm not sick of you. At all. I'm actually pretty in love with you, it turns out. They're so year, cute. And then two years, and then three years, four two, years, five years. You're joking. Also, side so note, sad. I love I that they have a little flower shop. And I'm like, oh, wow, she beat much. it. I love that. And then guess who shows up? Yep. This is what I was waiting for. What happened there then? Found it on the street. Wanted to save it. What is going on here? 
Danny, why is there... Here's the thing. Proposal. You're my best friend. And I love my life. And I don't know how much time we have left. But however much it is, I want to spend it with you. And I know we can't technically get married. But I also don't really care. Okay. The proposal was so cute. I love that Danny was the one to do it. I don't love that Danny did it because she felt like her time was about to come to an end. This is the best news. Hannah. I'm so happy for you both. Cheers, Owen restaurant. It's amazing. It's amazing. You're joking. Owen has his own restaurant and he has Hannah on the wall. I was unwell. Have you heard from Henry recently? Uh, check in every now and again. But hey, they are growing up and getting out into the world. So they're all happy? The yeah. kids. They're all happy, but... I don't remember anything about it. Crazy. What? Nothing. No. No, I was very concerned about this information. I still don't 100% understand why. Maybe it's because trauma and they're suppressing it and they're kids, so it's easier to suppress trauma from when you were young. But what are your theories on why the kids literally don't remember their time at Bly? Like, the fact that they don't remember Hannah is sad. I'll marry her again when we can. Oh my god, I thought she was drowning in the bathtub, and I was so nervous, but she's just staring <laughs> at the Lady of the Lake. Danny, That's such a day. creepy I shot. Myself fading away, but I'm still here. I don't understand You're still how that is. here. No one is going anywhere. Okay. Poor Jamie. This was really hard to see. This was where I started to feel bad for Jamie, rather than feel admiration for Jamie because throughout all this time it's like she knows that the time is going to have to come to an end with Danny and she's choosing to be the one to break her own heart and be there and see her through it all but now that it really is getting to the end and things are really starting to change she is kind of entering into what seems like denial I'm afraid that obviously we know what's going to happen next we know that Danny is going to choose to leave but I don't think Jamie would have ever let her do that and it probably would have been to both of it would have been to both of their detriment it just is like really sad to see how much Jamie loves Danny where like if all she can have is a ghost of her a shell of her she would take that over nothing and it's just a really it's really sad ew I hate how she perked up like that that's the lady of the lake coming almost kills her but Danny's still there I knew the moment had come the beast had lurked indeed, and the beast at its hour had sprung. Oh, oh right. This At this point in the episode, someone knocked and rang my doorbell, and I was so scared. But it was just the, the rug that I ordered. It was just a delivery. So don't be scared. But anyways, I understand that Danny needed to do this. She literally would have killed Jamie if she didn't leave. And so the gardener found herself back at Bly Manor. One I was last scared. Time. I, was, I thought a cycle was going to start up again. And then, you know, she starts going into the lake like this. And I was still not sure. Actually, I thought maybe she was going to, like, get the chest out and open it. And that was going to do something. But I was not ready to see this. She had. You. Me. Us. The lady in the lake was also Danny. And Danny wouldn't. Danny would never. And no one has been taken to this day. Okay, so I was confused. I was confused. I It clicked. I just had to sit with it for a second, but I got scared and I was like, has Danny been at the bottom of this lake ever since they did the You Me Us that night at Bly? And it really truly hasn't been completely her all these years. Like it has been the Lady of the Lake more in control all these years posing as Danny so that she could live. I was nervous, but then I was like, no, that <laughs> it all clicked. And I was like, I think she just went and drowned herself in the lake so that the lady of the lake couldn't take her over completely and cause trouble. The gardener would gaze into reflections, hoping to see her face. Oh, not the reflections, her you guys. Lady in the lake. More time. Her will own pass. lady in the lake. <gasps> and we're back will here. Wash away the delicate features of her, of her beautiful, perfect face. But she won't be hollow. Okay, notice, notice, once was, literally notice my face when most. she, who we now know as Jamie, the narrator is Jamie, notice my face when she says her beautiful, perfect face. I was like, okay, girl. I also noticed, like, for some reason, her accent stood out more to me when we came back to this scene. And I don't know why, because we've hear, heard her narrating throughout the whole show, but her accent seemed more like Jamie's accent. And I was like, oh, 
interesting but then she was like her beautiful perfect face talking about Danny and I was like you seem to be a little bit personally involved I don't know you seem a bit attached to Danny so my mind's my gears were running but I didn't say anything out loud at this point because I didn't want to sound stupid oh and this this man patting her on the shoulder very tenderly very lovingly and I was like it looks like he knew that was a lot for her to tell that story like he understands the story he knows she laid a lot out on the line bared her soul I was like that is I thought what if that's Owen what if that's Owen if this might be Jamie what if that's Owen I was thinking it your story I'm glad it's a love story you'll find little moments little pieces of your life and they'll be silly and dumb or they'll be sad and you'll cry for hours it'll be like he's this monologue with you even though he's gone now okay this is where i finally decided to say it out loud that after that monologue of jamie talking about like talking to this woman who i had no idea was flora zero idea i was like oh Okay, I think I have enough, I think I have enough hints for me to say out loud that this might be Jamie, because how can you give that whole monologue and be so reassuring to someone who is fearful of losing the one they love the most? It just felt so genuine, like the story she told, how it ended, and her promise that it will be okay when you lose someone you love, you'll still feel them there with you. I was like, okay, Jamie. I know it's you. I know you can say all this because you have the experience. I thought you might be making it up just off that name. That name? It's a funny coincidence, I suppose. My middle name is Flora. <laughs> is that right? Listen, you guys, I still didn't understand that it was Flora. I still didn't understand. I was like, in my head, I was like, oh my God, maybe she's related to Flora. Like maybe this is Flora's daughter and her name got passed down, but then she would be like, well, my mom's name is Flora. So I don't know. It makes complete sense that she decided to tell the story with the name Flora instead of Flora's real name, which it just occurred to me. We don't know Flora's real name. Is Miles even his middle name a real name or did she change that too for the sake of the story? Okay, and here it goes. They show me that it is Owen and then Miles did not know that Miles was there. And then they show this. They show this. I freaked out. I freaked out. When I saw that shot, I was like, oh my god, is that Uncle Henry? And then they show that it's Flora. I A lot of things were coming together for me. Everyone's there again together. Of course, Flora and Miles don't remember Jamie. They don't remember anything from Bly. So that's why she could get away with telling their story to them on a, such a special night. And then she goes back and looks at the reflections still. She's been looking at the reflections all this time and waiting with the door open. And the hand, the hand, that is Danny's hand on her shoulder. And then the Walter boys showed up. I was like, please go away, Walter boys. But that's it, you guys. That's it. I don't know. I, I got teared up. Tears were in my eyes. No tears fell. It was a beautiful ending and just an overall a great show about love and loss. I think that's what this show is about in every sense, even when it comes to the ghost part, even when it comes to the Lady of the Lake, it's all about love and loss and grief and living and moving on. And all of that is encompassed in this show. And I loved it so much. I love that they ended with, I will start crying again, <laughs> trying to talk about it right now. I was crying. I was trying not to cry when I was talking here too, cause as I was trying to say this part, I'm ridiculous. Um, I just love that they ended with Danny's hand. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna, you're gonna hear my cry voice. Danny's hand on Jamie's shoulder. Cause it's like, wow, Jamie has spent all of this time, like staring at the reflection, just waiting to see a glimpse of Danny. She seems content with not seeing it, but she still remains hopeful that maybe one day she will. And it's just nice to know that through all of that, through all of her love that has continued on without Danny, Danny is still there to receive it. And I just... I will start crying. I'm going to stop. Uh, I I loved this show, you guys. Um, I'm so sorry that it had to end with me doing a voiceover reaction, but that's what it is. And I hope to see you guys next time.